Allo produces all kinds of sound cards of better quality for the Raspberry Pi. The US Bridge signature differs from earlier products in that it uses the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus compute module while still offering headboard extensions like the Digi1 signature. The Raspberry Pi has become the standard for small board computers, SMBs for short. As a result, up to date Linux versions are available as are many programs for music playback. But when using the Raspberry Pi for audio, it has limitations too. Since it was never intended for serious audio applications, it generates lots of electronic noise that deteriorates the digital signals and thus the analog signal after conversion to analog. For those that think that digital can't go wrong, watch Connecting Your DAC Number 2, How Digital Can Go Wrong. Allo has tried every trick in the book in previous products to overcome the limitations of the Pi like using another more suited small board computer and using an isolated board between the Pi and the audio board. With the USB bridge signature on review here they made a clever move. It maintains the software flexibility and robustness of the Pi while at the same time opening the possibility to design audio optimized interfacing hardware. They use the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus compute module on an audio optimized circuit board. The compute module is the heart of the Raspberry Pi on a circuit board the size of about a DDR2 memory module. This module is also used in non-DIY products. Explaining where to use the US bridge signature is slightly more complex than usual since the functionality depends on the software you install. This being a hardware review, I have limited myself to the use of Volumio 2 and Rupi. Volumio is a fully fledged software music player that will play your own music from hard disk or network share, is a DLA and airplay renderer, plays internet radio stations and rendered music from Cobus, Tidal and Spotify. Rupi makes the USB signature a certified Rune endpoint with optionally also DLA and airplay rendering. To use it as a Rune endpoint you need a computer with Rune server installed. I have reviewed both Volumio and Rune, see the notes below this video in YouTube for links. DLA, Airplay and Rune need a computer for the server software, while programs like Volumio only need storage containing music, like a USB drive or a network share. Regardless of the software used, you do need to connect the USB signature to a DAC a digital to analog converter or an amplifier with built in DAC. The standard version of the USB bridge signature has a special USB output to connect to the USB input of the DAC. This signal has been cleaned up to keep jitter low. If your DAC doesn't have a USB input, you can add the Digi1 signature board to it that adds SPDIF outputs. The DAC has to be connected to an amplifier that drives a set of speakers. On the other side of the USB signature it needs to be connected to your home network over a network cable. Unless you order the optional Wi-Fi dongle then you can use your Wi-Fi network to connect it. Over the network you access the internet when needed, like for streaming services or internet radio. It also provides a connection to your computer or NAS containing for instance a DLA or Rune server and your music. Depending on the software used, you use a smartphone, tablet or computer for remote control. The USB signature needs to be powered by an external power supply, preferably one of audio file quality. As always with Allo products, you can order just a circuit board to build it in a case of your own liking or order a case from Allo. You can also order a completely built unit with the music player of choice already installed on the micro SD card. I review the completely built version here. You also need a power supply. That can be any power supply suited for the Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, meaning 5 volts, 3 amps, but 
If you go for audio quality, you better use an audiophile class power supply. I used the new Allo Shanti power supply on which I will post a review later. The US Bridge signature case is of simple design, measures 125 by 154 by 55 mm and weighs 550 grams. On the front left we see two USB-A sockets intended for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongles. Further to the right two LEDs to indicate network activity and power, with right of that the slot that holds the micro SD card with OS and software. On the rear we see the power input in the shape of a USB-C connector, an HDMI connector for connecting a monitor or TV, a USB-A connector to connect the DAC and the network connector. In the standard configuration the US Bridge Signature has one circuit board with the piggyback Raspberry Pi compute module. To keep it compatible with hard boards, the expansion type boards for the normal Raspberry Pi, there is an expansion slot called GPIO connector. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. It also has four mounting holes for a hard board. The interface with external devices is not provided by the compute module. This is where Allo wanted to make the difference. They use a Texas Instruments 4 port USB 2 interface chip and use techniques to make all four ports isolated from each other. For instance by using low drop voltage regulators all over the place, more than 30 according to Allo. One USB port is fully optimized for audio, the so called clean USB. Two USB ports can be found on the front for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongles and the fourth port goes to this chip which is an A6 USB 3 to Gigabit Ethernet interface. It can also handle USB 2 signals like used in this case and then is limited to the USB speed. According to Allo the data throughput is at least 330 megabits per second and that's far more than is needed for any two channel audio signal. If your DAC doesn't have a USB input, you can add the Digi1 signature headboard to the USB bridge. If you want to use the case, you need a different backplate with holes for the BNC and RCA connectors and the second power input. I reviewed the Digi1 signature earlier mounted on a normal Raspberry Pi. See the link in the notes below this video in YouTube. In short, it is a high quality SPDIF interface board for the Raspberry Pi that uses separate power lines for the computer part and the SPDIF interfacing. This is where the Shanti power supply comes in handy since it offers not only a 5V 3 amp output but also a separate 5V 1 amp output. The latter can be used to feed power to the clean power input on the Digi1 signature. To start using the USB bridge signature you only have to connect the network cable, the DAC and the power supply. You then insert the micro SD card holding the OS and player of choice in the slot on the front. If you have to make your own software SD card, see the instructions on the side of the software supplier. I would order a ready to use card with your USB bridge signature. Allo doesn't offer rupee pre-installed cards but the instructions on the rupee.org site are clear. You can also watch my review of rupee. If you want AirPlay, DNA and Spotify rendering next to Rune Endpoint functionality, install Rupee XL. The USB bridge signature is a step up from the original USB bridge that, by the way, did use a Sparky SMB instead of a Raspberry Pi. Using the Allo Shanti power supply the signature does outperform the original US bridge. It's a pity I don't have the original SOTM SMS200 anymore so I couldn't do a direct comparison, but they can't be far off. The sound quality is clearly on the top end of my setup 2 or even the low end of my setup 1. The same goes for when the Digi1 signature SPDIF board is added. It offers a slightly more relaxed sound, more spaciousness than the same board on a normal Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. To say it in simple words, it's a lot of sound quality for the buck. 
The LOUHB signature is a complex product to explain to you, for it is enormously flexible. If you just want a network player and no fuss, order the ready to use US Bridge player in its aluminium case plus the SD card with the operating system of choice and the shanty power supply. US customers pay $398 excluding sales tax. Europeans pay €497 Euros including VAT. Want a Digi1 signature added? Add $220 ex sales tax or €270 Euros including VAT. If your DAC has both USB and SPDIF inputs, try the USB only version first. There are however DACs that sound better when connected over SPDIF. As I've said many times, it's not the chip nor the interface, it is the way they are implemented. Right from the start, Allo tried to produce a good sound quality digital player based on the Raspberry Pi and they kept improving at high pace. I also liked the switch from the acrylic cases to aluminium. Allow me to once again point at the progression in digital audio, offering more and more audio quality at lower prices. That doesn't mean that anything cheap performs just as well, but if you select your products with care, there are clear steps to be made. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday, as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media, so you will be notified when new videos are out. If you like this video, give the thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially, it keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, Enjoy the music.